Hello and happy Resurrection Day. He is risen indeed. Thank you for joining me for today's post of Give Him 15. And the title of this post is Paid in Full. It is hard to be perplexed or confused when you see the end from the beginning. That's a quote from Isaiah, a partial quote from Isaiah 46, 10, which says God declares the end from the beginning. It's hard to be perplexed or confused when you see the end from the beginning. And it is impossible to be afraid, alarmed, or discouraged when what you saw was your complete victory. Christ was able to endure the cross because of the joy set before him, the redemption of earth and his family. I am always somewhat amused when I see Hollywood's depiction of Christ as he gave up his spirit on the cross. They typically have him barely whispering with his last bit of strength, it is finished. The producers, of course, see this as Christ announcing his death. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In the first place, those were not his last words spoken on the cross. His final words are, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And the words, it is finished, actually are one Greek word, and it does not refer to his death. Christ was actually making an announcement, even a proclamation. And he did not barely breathe out the word, he cried out with a loud voice. The Greek word is tetelestai. Jesus was quoting Psalm twenty-two thirty-one 31 when he said this. Three of his seven sayings on the cross come from this psalm, Psalm 22. The Hebrew word used here is asa in Psalm twenty-two thirty-one. 31. We don't really know whether Jesus shouted the Hebrew word Asa or the Greek word Tetelestai, but since scripture uses both, it is fair to say both words accurately describe what he was communicating. Asa, the Hebrew word, means to perform, accomplish, or fulfill something. It is also the Hebrew word for create, used to describe many facets of physical creation. Jesus could have been announcing that he had accomplished the mission, performing all that was required of him. Or he could have been declaring the birth of the new creation, or both. The root of of the Greek word Jesus used in John 1930, teleo means to complete, perform, or accomplish, just as the Hebrew word asa. Another definition of teleo is to finish the necessary process with the results rolling over to the next level or phase of consummation. So it's a finishing, but the results move you into the new. And still another meaning is to pay. This form of the word Jesus used, to tetelestai, was stamped on the invoices of that day, meaning paid in full. And the tense of the word in the Greek language indicates both a point in time that something was finished, completed, or paid, and also that it would continue to be complete, 
Wow. I'm going to say that again because I want to make sure you get it because there is a tense in Greek that is a continuous tense. It means something is done now, but it continues to be done. So here we go again. Teleo means to complete, perform, or accomplish. It means to finish the necessary process with the results rolling over to the next level or phase of consummation. It means to pay or paid in full. And the tense in the Greek language indicates both a point in time that something was finished, completed, or paid, and also that it will continue to be complete. I'm sorry, I know I'm preaching, but that's exciting. Putting these definitions together, Jesus was announcing that he had accomplished all that was necessary for all time and eternity, paid the debt in full, consummated our redemption so that we could now enter the next phase of God's plan, the new creation in him. This decree was the New Testament's version of Genesis' creative commands, let there be, let there be, let there be. This was the New Testament version, let there be. The resurrection, three days later, was a foregone conclusion. God had already seen and declared it. That's why he laughed at the powers of darkness in Psalm 2-4 when they declared Christ would not rule over them in verses 1-3. to Hell has never intimidated Yahweh nor made him question his ability to do as he says. As far as God was concerned, Christ had risen before he even died. And also, as far as God is concerned, a glorious church, an ecclesia that can fully reveal and represent the risen Lord is guaranteed. A legislative arm of his kingdom on planet earth that the gates of hell cannot prevail against is inevitable. Yes, the preparation of this ecclesia is still in process but just as surely as Christ is risen, it is settled in heaven. After I came back to Christ in 1973, following two years of wondering caused by a very deep wound, one of the first messages I heard was entitled, What Satan Saw on the Day of Pentecost by Kenneth Copeland. It rocked my world. And I mean, it rocked my world. The bottom line of the message was that those in the upper room received Christ's nature and righteousness. They were now one with him, filled with his spirit, even called Christians, which means little Christ. They were so much like him. The world started calling them little Christ. 1 John 4, 17 actually says, All that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Satan had been beaten up by Christ in every possible way for three years. The blind saw, the lame walked, the deaf heard, and the dead were raised. Then, just when he thought he had finally defeated the Son of God, Christ turned the tables on him and rose from the dead. At least he was finally gone from the planet, back to heaven, Satan must have thought. Then, on the day of Pentecost, Satan's absolute worst nightmare was realized. There were a hundred and twenty more just like him. 
and the multiplication has never stopped. Christ brought us into the family of God. He made us his brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the Most High God, his joint heirs. We bear his image and name. We are filled with his spirit and completely authorized to reveal and represent him on earth. And that can never be stopped or reversed. That is what Resurrection Sunday means to me. Pray with me. Thank you, Father for sending Jesus. Thank you for loving us enough to reverse the fall and bring us back into your family. Thank you for such a great salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for joining the human race so that we could join you in your family. Thank you for making us joint heirs with you. Thank you for the cross and thank you for winning. Thank you for the resurrection. You are the conquering king. You never lose. You are good all the time and we love you with all of our hearts. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to dwell in us. Thank you for being our helper, our counselor, guide, our source of power. Thank you for being ever present. This day, we celebrate the three of you, our great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and our decree. What else could it be today? We declare that Jesus is risen indeed. Thank you. See you tomorrow.